high point of 2009 for the car industry was the Geneva Car Show. Green technology taking center stage. Electric cars are progressing further towards production readiness. And the governator sees red, Arnold Schwarzenegger, in the new Porsche GT3. Let the tiger out. Gio Giaro has built the fastest hybrid in the world. It's called Namir, the Arabic word for tiger. With a top speed of over 350 kilometers per hour, this concept car is definitely not for slow coaches. Three touch screens allow you to use modern communications technology or simply give it some gas, or rather, electricity. The car's 397 electric horsepower catapulted from 0 to 100 in 3.5 seconds. This hot model is Rinspeed's iChange. What the Swiss developers wanted was sleekness and low energy requirements. What came out is a glass dome on wheels. The main attraction, depending on how much space you need, the roof can be extended via an iPod, which means you have the flexibility to drive alone or with two passengers. With 177 horsepower, the electric runabout can go from 0 to 100 in 4 seconds. The top speed is 250 kilometers per hour. The future is speedy. The iChange will never go into production and it shouldn't. It's an innovation car, but individual elements and technology from it could very likely be added into the series. It's a shame, really. Luxury tuners, Bravos, have also an electric engine in the smart. But where has the weird V8 sound come from? I think it's necessary also to have a sound. It would be weird if you don't have a sound and uh, could be potentially dangerous if you don't have a sound. So why not this way? Safety is one thing, but we don't want to hear any more of this sound rubbish from a Brebus car. A world premiere. The electric car's future has begun with Opel's Ampera. Back in 2007, still a concept under the name Flexstream, Opel presented its close-to-production version. With purely electric power, it should have a potential range of 60 kilometers. On top of this, there's a combustion engine as a range extender. This should open up a whole new dimension of fuel economy. This technology separates what this, what the vehicle is capable of doing from all other known hybrid technologies. We are able to do less than 40 grams of CO2 per kilometer in this car, which is equal to 1.6 liter per 100 kilometer. So it is a whole different, I think, uh, uh, dimension compared to other fuel saving technologies. The batteries can easily be charged at any electrical socket. The Ampera should be available in dealerships from 2011. The Citroën GT took an unusual route to the streets. Originally developed as a futuristic race car with fuel cell technology for the computer game Gran Turismo 5, the French company decided to produce it in reality too. In the computer game, the car has an output of 653 horsepower from the fuel cells. On the road, it's powered by a more standard V8 engine. We'd like to see green technology here in the future too. A European premiere for the third generation Toyota Prius. The Japanese flagship hybrid can produce 98 horsepower from the petrol engine and 80 from its electric engine. It's available from July, starting at 25,000 euros. According to Toyota, the Prius has saved almost 10 million tons of CO2 since 1997, but unfortunately, only on paper. The laborious battery production and the resulting extra weight increase the CO2 emissions. A really clean and production-ready alternative to the combustion engine is not yet in sight. But how are things looking with the ever-popular gas guzzlers? The new Mazda 3 MPS with a brisk 260 horsepower is part of this merry band. From the autumn, you can chase GTIs in the sports version of the Japanese car. The price has not yet been confirmed, but is expected to compare with its predecessor's cost of just under 26,000 euros. 
Alpha is lighting a fire under its newest model, the Mito, premiered in Geneva as a GTA concept with 240 turbo horsepower. The production-ready model will be available at Alpha dealers from next year, with 19-inch forged wheels and sport seats with four-point harness seat belts, a racing feel is guaranteed. As a safety measure, the concept even has two helmets on board. With so many extras, the Mito will definitely be a babe magnet. It's just a shame that there's so little space in the two-seater. A bubble car with an innocent look, now Fiat's bestseller, is available as a convertible. Although the 500C's large folding roof is a bit of a joke to cabriolet purists, the retro car's triumphal procession will continue to be irresistible. Lead times of up to half a year should be expected. Despite this, they will be on sale in time for the start of the open-air season. You can have a topless Cinquecento for around 1,500 euros extra. Tata creates a European version of its inexpensive nano model. The Tata Nano Europa is expected to be available in dealerships from 2011 with a price of around 2,500 euros. The workmanship is not exactly high quality, but at that price, savings have to be made somewhere. It will be interesting to see how safe it proves to be in its first crash tests. Eye candy everywhere, and not only for car enthusiasts. Thirty-three years ago, the Golf GTI caused uproar in the car industry. Now the sixth generation is shaking up the streets with 210 horsepower. Once angular and with 110 horsepower, it's now become a comfortable beauty. The current 2-litre turbo engine takes the 1.3-ton sports car from 0 to 100 in 6.9 seconds. The VW Polo has been thoroughly revised, available in two petrol versions with 60 and 70 horsepower respectively, and as a 75 horsepower diesel. Visually, it bears more resemblance to its big brother, the Golf. Prices start at around 12,000 euros. Happy birthday, Subaru! For 20 years, the legacy has existed unobtrusively in Europe. With their new legacy concept, the Japanese finally hope to challenge their German competitors. An abundance of gadgetry and a sporty finish are definitely the right recipe for success. Well then, good luck! The Ford Focus RS has 305 horsepower behind the front wheels. The five-cylinder, 2.5-liter engine generates 440 newton meters of torque. Prices start at 33,900 euros. Lamborghini also stirs up some intense cravings with the special edition Murcielago SV. It's a pedigree sports car with impressive figures, 670 horsepower and 660 newton meters of torque. Take it from 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds and to a top speed of 342 kilometers per hour. But only the car's 12-cylinder heart has been beefed up. The rest of it has been trimmed down. It weighs 100 kilos less, just 2.3 kilos per horsepower. Bentley presents the Continental Supersport for the first time in the company's history. Bentley, owned by the Volkswagen Group, has considered alternatives to premium fuel. The 6-litre W12 can now also use petrol with a bioethanol admixture. The interior is dominated by carbon fibre, brushed metal and the finest leather. 630 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque are enough to give it a top speed of 329 kilometers per hour. Nought to 100 takes just 3.9 seconds. The price is still unconfirmed. Arnold Schwarzenegger brought a touch of Hollywood to the Geneva car show. The governor of California doesn't just have a clear agenda in environmental policies, but also in his choice of car. Apparently nothing less than 400 horsepower will do, so the Porsche stand is a must. But the Terminator didn't take a shine to the environmentally friendly Cayenne diesel, preferring the new Porsche GT3. 435 horsepower and a top speed of 321 kilometers per hour will burn up the Californian tarmac. Arnie likes it, and so it seems does Ralph Müller. Maybach launches with a legend. 
The special edition Zeppelin, limited to 100 units, is powered by a V12 twin turbo with 640 horsepower. A homage to the cars of the 1930s, it's the jewel in the crown of the Maybach range. Chrome shadow, finished 20-inch wheels are included in the price, but the interior fragrance system will cost well-heeled customers another 3,950 euros. At least it comes with a fitting key fob and two silver champagne flutes. Prices start at 483,140 euros for the shorter 57 version and over 560,000 for the 62 version. Naturally, individual requests are accommodated without limit. Also part of the elite 300 km per hour club is Aston Martin. Their entry into the V12 world begins with the Vantage. For around 170,000 euros, you get 517 horsepower and a top speed of 305 km per hour. Aston Martin revives a legend with the Lagonda concept. With this car, the Brits aim to replicate the heyday of the Lagonda brand in the 1930s. It's a new class of car, ALC or avant-garde luxury car. As a matter of course, it has 12 cylinders and four-wheel drive. After all, a lord needs a car befitting his rank to get him to his estate. It will be available at Aston Martin dealers from 2012. Wiesmann celebrate the world premiere of the Roadster MF4. A choice of two engines is available. The 367 and 420 horsepower engines are from BMW and can be combined with a six-speed manual transmission or seven-speed double-clutch transmission. For the first time, driver and passenger airbags are included during construction, but they're also necessary at speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour. The matching designer tires are from Fredestein. The Ultrac Cento from the Giorgiaro Design Center can reach 300 km per hour. Thanks to low road resistance, it should protect the environment. This carbon fiber monster comes from Mansori, a luxury tuning company. The Bugatti Veyron already costs 1 million euros for the basic model before tax. If that's not enough, the Bavarian luxury tuners can upgrade it for another 720,000 euros before tax, of course. Thanks to an increased cool air supply and improved exhaust system, 1,109 horsepower produces 1,310 newton meters of sheer power. There are many highlights this year, but the truth, as always, lies under the bodywork. We can expect a noticeable increase in environmentally friendly innovation at the IAA in Frankfurt this autumn.